Hello, hello. Nice to be with you again. And let's take a moment together. Hmm. I'm, I'm noticing that what I feel right now is a lot of joy at feeling connected with you, even though I can't see you, we can't, I can't hear you, and yet I, I see what you write in the chat, and I see your names in my list of attendees, and I, I have a feeling of connection now, and how valuable that is, how precious that is. So earlier today, before we started this call, I was feeling a bit agitated, a, a bit uneasy. It has to do with the things that are happening in my country. The feeling that voices are now being heard, grateful for that, but wondering how I can help, how I can contribute to what's going on. So I say hello to that. And let's do that together right now. Think outside events are very concerning to me, to us for so many reasons. I could list them all, you know, and for you there, it's not the same for everyone. But here's what we can do together right now. And that is pause and acknowledge how we actually feel, how you actually feel. In your body right now is your feeling. And the thing about feelings is, I mean, there's a list of emotions. Every language has one. Sad, happy, angry, afraid. But what we find in our body is something richer, more complex, more subtle than that. And many feelings don't even have names. And it's that dimension of how you feel that it can be so powerful to get in touch with. So let's do that right now. Yeah, Daya, you're listening just what I'm talking about. Let's do that together right now. Pausing. You know, just to pause is one of the most self-caring things that you can do. And we have to care for ourselves or how can we care for others? So pause and begin to feel your body, your body in contact with what you're sitting on. If you're sitting, your body in contact with whatever it's in contact with. Feeling the contact of your body, feeling your breathing. And slowing down, like deliberately saying, okay, here I am, slowing down in order to feel how I feel. Let awareness come to the, especially the inner areas of your body, your throat, your chest, your stomach, and your belly. And let's have the idea today that what you're going to find inside yourself might have no words. Let's let all our words float away. And as you feel inside, let the feel of being here right now, living your life, let the feel of that be here with no words. And the describing of what you feel might need images, colors, combinations of several words, or kind of, or a little bit like.
And then whatever you are feeling, say to it, I know, I hear you. I'm here with you. So this is actually the next most powerful thing we can do after pausing. And that is to say to your feelings, I am here with you. And tough things are happening. All kinds of tough things. It's very natural to have feelings in response to that. Feelings are understandable. Feelings of anxiety, anger, sadness, and so on. Understandable. And all these subtle feelings that we don't have words for. Uneasy, agitated. It's very understandable. We may let feelings impel us into action. That may be what we decide to do. But first, we're pausing to sense, pausing to sense how it is. And saying to the feelings, I am here with you. I'm here with you. Notice how it feels to do that. Because the I is the whole of you. And when you are here, your feelings don't take you over or knock you over or wipe you out. They don't really want to do that. <laughs> Your feelings don't want to be bigger than you are. They want you to be here with them, feeling them. If you need more time for that, please feel free to take it. I'm going to keep talking. But sometimes we need silence to, to be with what we feel and that may be something you'll do later. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, Dinah writes like being the loving parent to the baby feelings. None of us, nobody I've ever met has ever been listened to, heard, appreciated as much as they really deserve. When, especially when we were younger. Like we're deprived, aren't we? Empathy deprived. And we hope we'll get that empathy from other people. We'll, that's a thing we can do in community and connection. We can give that to each other and we can give it to ourselves. I hear you. You can say to whatever you're feeling, I hear you. And so often people don't do that. They dismiss their feelings, they negate their feelings, they try to talk themselves out of their feelings, they evaluate their feelings as not not correct somehow. Let's not do those things. <laughs> I've done it so often in my life. Let's not do that anymore. Let's say to our feelings, I hear you. I'm here with you. Yes. Christina writes, I sense a child weeping and weeping inside of me. And you can be with that child, right? She gets to weep. She gets to weep and you can be with her. So beautiful. Yeah. Haja writes, inside is like a tsunami. Mm, powerful image. Yes. And my self in presence is stable and protective. So inside like a tsunami, chaos out there, and I am here. What can we do to add to our ability to be, we call it self in presence, self in presence. We can feel our body contact on what we're sitting on. See if that helps, right? If you're feeling shaky, if you're feeling in danger of being overwhelmed or fragile, see if it helps to uh, wiggle your toes and rub your feet on the ground. Rub your hands together. <laughs> I wiggle my, my butt. Yeah. I take a deeper breath. And I'm deliberately doing that to give myself more support. <laughs> it feels good to me to do that. Maybe it feels good to you too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Carol writes, 
Last week, I was criticizing myself and feeling guilty for feeling sad and angry about the death of George Floyd, as I didn't know him, and I was told off as a child for reacting to strangers' deaths. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that happened. You were obviously a sensitive child. You knew that anyone's death affects everyone. <sighs> so here's the thing. Maybe we're feeling angry and guilty, for example. And then we have, I shouldn't feel that way. But this part of us, the one that says I shouldn't feel that way, is another feeling to be gentle to. It's another part of us that's trying to help. So we don't have to make anything in us wrong or bad. We don't have to dis disrespect any of our inner voices. So we'd say, I'm sensing something in me feeling angry and guilty. And I'm sensing something in me saying I shouldn't feel that way. And I am here with both of them. I'm here with both. And when you do that as a practice, just continually say, I'm sensing this and I'm sensing this and I am here with both. That builds your ability to be self in presence. Yes. Sarah writes, I find myself feeling guilty for sending all this attention towards myself while I'm privileged, I'm safe, I'm not poor. And we can say hello to something in you feeling guilty. Now there's a next step, right? After you say hello to a feeling that you're having, you can sit with it to get to know it better. So there's something feeling guilty. Sitting with that in order to listen, in order to let it express itself more. There's something about a longing in there, maybe something you're wanting in for the world, for others. You can listen, you can get to know each feeling that you're having. And again, when we try to argue ourselves out of our feelings, when we dismiss them, when we push them away, it shuts off a process. And that's why certain feelings come back again and again, because the process has been shut down, it's been shut off. So my uneasy feeling today, there's something about wanting to honor, be part of what's going on in the world right now. People letting their voices be heard, speaking up, wanting to honor and be part of that, not knowing how, not knowing where, my, what, where I can be helpful. And I can sit with that further listen more deeply to what that is. What is the longing in there? Yes, yes. So we've got a process of pausing and sensing. And then something says, well, you're paying so much attention to yourself. But actually, like on the airline, when they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Unless we can give care to ourselves, how can we give it to others? By turning toward ourselves for a while, we build our strengths. We build our ability to be resilient. We build our ability to be calm. We, we have a bigger perspective. If I'm, if I'm filled with a feeling that I don't have any space around, I can't think very well. I can't see the bigger picture. I can't discern where my action will be most effective, calling up somebody, getting information, taking, giving a, a donation or a contribution. I can't discern where that, where that action would fit. So by pausing, see, I'm inviting you to pause with me because this is, a, this is a webinar on support for stressful times. And the greatest thing you can do when you're stressed by what you're going through is give yourself 
this quality of attention, pausing to sense how you are and acknowledging how you are. But then what comes from that? What are you able to do after being able to do that? And there's so much. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Sarah writes, I understand I can say hello to the feeling of guilt. That's right. And Christina writes, it's such a habit to keep on and not look at what's inside. Yes, because maybe we learned how to do that from our families or from the world around us. Keep going. Don't pay attention to your feelings. You know, in, in my family, when I was growing up, nobody ever acknowledged feelings. It wasn't something anybody ever did. We had feelings, but to talk about them, to acknowledge them, didn't happen. I had no models for that. And then I got into the world of focusing and I, I was around people who, who noticed how they felt and were able to articulate it and invited me to do the same. Oh my gosh, it was like the sun coming up. Like I'd wanted that all my life. Here I, can you give an example, a question that we can ask the something in us after saying, hello, I'm with you. Yes, yes, okay. So it's not so much about asking yourself a question. Oh, and that reminds me, I was telling you that I, I entered this when my 20s, I, I was so lucky and I entered this world of people who actually asked each other, how are you? How is that for you? That was the phrase I, I heard from the, my friends for the first time. How is that for you? And imagine, we can say that to each other, right? We don't just assume, oh, it's terrible. It's hard being alone, isn't it? It's hard being sheltered. It's hard hearing what's going on in the news. It's hard worrying about all that. Well, wait a minute. I don't want to assume it's any particular way for you. How is that for you? <laughs> I love it. Uh, isn't that exciting that we get to ask each other that? How is that for you? And not assume. Well, we can do that for ourselves. So that's the question. A very broad, inviting, open-ended question. Show me more. Tell me more. How is that for you? What's going on there? I'd love to hear. What brings that particular feeling of heaviness or tightness or despair or anger? It comes from somewhere. Oh, and there's another little thing I love to do. And that is to say, um, there's something about, okay? So let's say you know that that external event is connected to a stressful feeling you're having. And that's not the same as knowing that it ca caused your feeling. I've, I've said before in these webinars, that external events don't cause our feelings. They don't make us feel a certain way. They merely contribute. There's something else that happens, something that where we have power and agency, we're not victims of what happens. Okay, so you have this feeling, scared, overwhelmed, angry, fragile, vulnerable, and you can tell it's connected to to that that's happening out there. And then you pause and you say, hello to the feeling inside. I'm, there's, I'm sensing you're there. And there's something about that that brings this. Do you see how that works? that beautiful phrase, something about, lets us wonder what it is about that that brings this. And it's not something you can answer from your head. If you do answer for your, for, from your head, ask again. Oh, 
And you can tell if you're answering from your head because you'll say things like, I think, or it must be, or it's probably, okay? So if those kinds of answers came, then, then, then try again. Vulnerable, sad, scared, angry is in here. And there's that. I don't know if it's the coronavirus or the social unrest or the endemic racism or the fear about fascism, all those things, whatever that is that you can tell this is about. You stay with the body feeling and then say, and there's something about that that especially brings this for me. Yeah. It takes a while, but you can see what I'm talking about. That we, nobody has exactly the same emotional reaction to anything. We have our unique emotional reaction. If we just assume we have the same emotional reaction as everybody else, that's another way to ignore our own feelings. You get to have a unique reaction. You don't have to have the same reaction as everyone else. The same crisis could bring two very different reactions, three, four, 10, 20, 100, a million. It's when we turn toward our own unique reactions to what's going on that we find something that has a life energy in it. And what I mean by life energy is what's needed next will emerge when we acknowledge what is here. And we acknowledge our own unique feel about it. Yeah, yeah. So is this making sense? Is it helping? Susan writes, I was able to know that's something nobody else can read. I'm not gonna read that. Ah, Sarah writes, when asking myself, how am I? My body responds with a breath as deep as a waterfall. Wow, I love that. What a beautiful image. Okay, people are responding to my question about whether this is making sense. Yes, all right, good. So what shall we do this week? What if you sense right now what it would be like to go through each day with moments of pausing, moments of pausing in your day. What about whenever you stand up, you also pause and sense how you are? Or whenever you sit down, or if that movement of standing up and sitting down doesn't make sense for you, what might be another common thing you do all day where at that moment you could just pause and say, let me check how I am right now. Toria writes, I'm getting to the layer of disappointment underneath the fear of my current trouble in breathing. Wow, yeah, I'm glad you liked my, my question. You can ask yourself and other people, how is that for you? How is that for you? And we have another phrase, we practice this week, and that is something about. So there's something about all that that brings this feeling of mm, right now. And do you get the feel of what happens there? You're not a victim of it. It makes me feel that way. No, there's something about that that hits me in this particular way. Well, we just have a minute, so I appreciate all of you so much. I'm so glad you're coming. We're going to keep going. We've now scheduled to keep going through July. <laughs> Maybe we'll just keep going until the times aren't stressful anymore. <laughs> what would that be like? <laughs> ah, lovely to be with you. Pause. How is that for you? 
keep going. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>